There's been a lot of misinformation spread about health care reform. There's been plenty of fear mongering, plenty of overheated rhetoric. If you turn on the news, you'll see the same folks are still shouting about there's going to be an end of the world because this bill passed. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. The leaders of the Republican Party, they call the passage of this bill Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon. End of freedom as we know it. I saw, so after I signed the bill, I looked around to see if there were any <laughs> asteroids falling. Or, Sudden, sudden cracks opening up in the earth. <laughs> Turned out it was a nice day. <laughs> Birds were chirping. Folks were strolling down the mall. People still had their doctors. From this day forward, all of the cynics, all the naysayers, they're going to have to confront the reality of what this reform is and what it isn't. They'll have to finally acknowledge this isn't a government takeover of our health care system. They'll see that if Americans like their doctor, they'll be keeping their doctor. You like your plan, you'll be keeping your plan. No one's taking that away from you. Three months from now, six months from now, you're going to look around, you're going to be sitting in a doctor's office reading through the old people magazines. And <laughs> you'll say, hey, this is the same doctor. Same plan. It wasn't Armageddon. What this reform does is build on the system of private health insurance that we already have. So does that mean that it's going to solve every health care problem that we have? No. But it finally tells — oops, it looks like somebody may have fainted. Uh, that happens sometimes in the crowd. Just give them some space. If the medics can make sure to check on them, in the meantime, just make sure that they, they've got some air. All right? And if anybody has some water down there, that'd be great. They'll be all right. So, but here's what the bill does. It finally tells the insurance companies that in exchange for all the new customers they're about to get, they've got to start playing by a new set of rules that treats everybody honestly and treats everybody fairly. The days, the days of the insurance industry running roughshod over the American people are over. So if you already, if you already have insurance, this reform will make it more secure and more affordable. If you can't afford insurance right now, or if you've been denied coverage, and I'll bet there's some folks here who don't have insurance or can't afford it or have been denied coverage, you're going to finally be able to get it. Costs will come down for families and businesses and the federal government, reducing our deficit by more than $1 trillion over the next two decades. That's what reform is going to do. Now, it's going to take about four years to implement this entire plan, because we've got to do it responsibly. We need to do it right. So I just want to be clear. That means that health care costs won't go down overnight. Not all the changes are going to be in place. There's still going to be aspects of the health care system that are very frustrating over the next several years. But we have built into law all sorts of measures that in the years to come, health care inflation, which has been rising about three times as fast as people's wages, is finally going to start slowing down. We'll start reducing the waste in the system from unnecessary tests to unwarranted insurance subsidies so that over time Americans are going to save money. And meanwhile, there are, there are a set of reforms that begin to take into effect this year. So I want to talk about this. This year, 
Millions of small business owners will be eligible for tax credits that will help them cover the cost of insurance for their employees. This year, millions of small businesses will benefit. So let me talk to you about what this means for a business like your own Prairie Lights bookstore downtown. This is a small business that's been offering coverage to their full-time employees for the last 20 years. Last year, their premiums went up 35 percent, which made it a lot harder for them to offer the same coverage. On Tuesday, I was joined at the bill signing by Ryan Smith, who runs a small business with five employees. His premiums are going up, too. He's worried about having to stop offering health insurance to his workers. So starting now, small business owners like Ryan and the folks at Prairie Light, they're going to have the security of knowing that they'll qualify for a tax credit that covers up to 35 percent of their employees' health insurance. Starting today, starting today, small business owners So starting today, small business owners can sit down at the end of the week, look at their expenses, and they can begin calculating how much money they're going to save. And maybe they can even use those savings to not only provide insurance, but also create jobs. This health care tax credit is pro-jobs, it is pro-business, and it starts this year, and it's starting because of you. Starting this year, tens of thousands of uninsured Americans with a pre-existing condition and parents whose children have a pre-existing condition will finally be able to purchase the coverage they need. You know, on Tuesday, right, on Tuesday, right after I, I signed the bill, I met David Gallagher, whose daughter Lauren had written me a letter last year. And when Lauren's mom lost her job, the entire family lost their health insurance. And when they tried to get new insurance, David was denied coverage because he once had a complication-free hernia surgery. So Lauren's been worried sick about what would happen if her father became ill or injured. But now, because of this reform, David Gallagher can finally have access to health insurance again. That starts this year because of you and the work that you did. This year, insurance companies will no longer be able to drop people's coverage when they get sick or place lifetime limits or restrictive annual limits on the amount of care they can receive. This year, all new insurance plans will be required to offer free preventive care. And by the way, for all the students who are here today, starting, starting this year, if you don't have insurance, or if you're about to graduate and you're not sure what your next job's going to be or there's a little gap between getting that job with insurance, all new plans and some current ones will allow you to stay on your parents' insurance policy until you're 26 years old, starting this year. Because as you start your lives and your careers, the last thing you should worry about is whether you go broke just because you get sick. This year, for the seniors who are in the audience, if you fall in the coverage gap known as the donut hole, you're going to receive $250 to help pay for prescriptions, which will be the first step towards closing that donut hole, that gap, completely. And I want seniors to know. I want seniors to know that despite what some have said, these reforms will not cut your guaranteed benefits. In fact, under this law, Americans on Medicare will receive free preventive care without copayments and deductibles. 